Good evening, YouTubers and South East Queenslanders. It's Ben here from South East Queensland Storms, back with you for a current weather situation update for South East Queensland, and your situation update starts now. Good evening, YouTubers and South East Queenslanders. Welcome to your current weather situation update for the South East Queensland region as of 6pm on this dark and gloomy Monday, the 12th of August, 2024. And a very good evening to you wherever you are tuning in to this weather situation update and as you can see on the top of your video screen we are currently tracking the potential for moderate to heavy rainfall to impact both the central and southeastern Queensland regions over the preceding 24 to 48 hours. A flood watch remains in effect from the Bureau as well as a hazardous surf warning and we'll have all those details for you very shortly. But before we begin this update please remember to click that subscribe button and give this video a like if you're liking our content on YouTube and if you look on the bottom of your video screen you'll also find our details for other social social media platforms such as X or Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. All right, let's jump into your situation update for this evening. Current satellite radar imagery for the Brisbane region shows quite a bit of activity this evening with air, well, becoming widespread areas of showers and rain periods. And as we can see, if we start up in the Wide Bay Burnett district up around Miriamvale, Bundaberg, Maribara, we've got light to moderate rainfall moving onshore from the north northeast with uh, areas of rain now establishing between Bundaberg down through Maribara into Gympie. Areas in the yellow and the orange indicate the moderate rainfall. That activity, that rain activity is pushing further inland towards Mundumbra, Kingaroy, to Room as well. Areas of green and blue indicates light rainfall and then we see these little patches of yellow to orange that is more indicative of moderate rainfall. So moderate rainfall currently falling in between Injun and Room, extending down towards Roma. We've also got some moderate rainfall just to the east of Surat here. As we come further down to the south, we can see some moderate rainfall pushing onshore through Morton Island in towards Brisbane's north side, continuing inland, and then light to moderate rainfall uh, extending into the scenic rim as well. Got some light rainfall currently falling between Inglewood up to Toowoomba, and this rainfall is only set to increase as we move across the next 24 to 48 hours. As this trough system, and if you've looked at my other forecast videos over the last 24 hours, hours we've explained in depth uh, the weather system that is responsible for this upcoming rain. So what we are looking at is that upper level trough amplifying and strengthening as it continues to move towards the east. That upper level trough in the upper levels of the atmosphere is working in conjunction with a surface trough in the lower levels and that is likely to bring this moderate to heavy rainfall potential for central and southeastern Queensland over the next 24 to 48 hours. Another factor we are also watching is for the possible development of a low pressure system, whether it's embedded in the surface trough through central Queensland or it becomes an east coast low, but this low pressure system development could have an impact on how much rain we see and also the intensity of the rain that we see as well, but that's something we're going to need to monitor in real time as to where that and if that low pressure system develops, because if it does, if the low pressure system develops in central Queensland along or on the coast, then areas on the southern side of the system will most likely see an, a sharp increase in rainfall and rainfall intensity rates. However, if the system develops offshore, then obviously all the heavier rain on the southern side of the system stays well and truly offshore as well. So that's something that we need to watch. So remember, if the low develops on or near the coast, up in central Queensland, then areas on that southern side will see the heaviest of the rainfall. That's due to the clockwise rotation of the low pressure system. So that's current radar satellite imagery. Let's take a look at some rainfall totals over the last 24 hours. And as you can see along the entire east coast of Queensland, right from north Queensland down to central to southeastern Queensland, it's widespread rainfall recorded in the last preceding 24 hours with some rainfall already over 100 millimetres recorded in North Queensland and rainfall exceeding 50 millimetres already recorded here in southeastern, southeastern Queensland. So let's do a deeper dive firstly starting in North Queensland. Rainfall last 24 hours, as you can see, the heaviest of the rainfall concentration has been around the Townsville uh, area down towards Air Home Hill, where we saw some rainfall exceeding 100 millimetres recorded. Firstly, Horton Bridge recorded 103 millimetres, Upper Major Creek 138 millimetres, Woodlands 107 millimetres, and Mount Stewart Training 103 millimetres. Rainfall exceeding 50 millimetres was also recorded in the orange dots as well, and down towards the uh, Proserpine area, we saw rainfall. Uh, Strathdickey 54 millimetres, Lower Gregory 55, Bowen with 40 millimetres. Further down towards Mackay, we had Clark Range with 51 millimetres, and out towards the Burdick and Dan McConnell with 63 millimetres. But again, the concentration of the heavier rainfall all in that uh, Townsville area, down towards Charters Towers, down towards Air. So this weather system definitely producing 
uh, rainfall that's definitely unseasonal for this time of year. We come down further towards the southeast Queensland coast, and as I said, we've had rainfall already uh, recorded exceeding 50 millimetres. Firstly, on Stratty Point, Lookout has recorded 78 millimetres in the past 24 hours. Down on the Queensland New South Wales border, Cool and Gatta with 58 millimetres, Coplex Bridge with 60 millimetres, Oyster Creek with 55 millimetres, and again on the Queensland New South Wales border, Tome Wind with 56 millimetres. So some heavier rainfall already. Uh, falling down around that uh, Gold Coast area towards the Queensland New South Wales border. Rainfall in the dark blue uh, indicates rainfall exceeding 10 millimetres up to 24 millimetres, and some rainfall in the light green dots is indicative of rainfall between 25 to 49 millimetres. So in the Brisbane metro area, luggage point 25 millimetres there, Sanford Valley recording 25 there, and Brisbane's inner west. Down on Stratty, 26 millimetres at South Stradbroke Island, Stiglitz Wharf, 25 millimetres, Coomera. Uh, coming in with 28 millimetres and Oxford Weir with 26 millimetres as well. So this, this weather system is definitely producing and there is more rain on the way. We currently have a flood watch in effect from the Bureau of Meteorology and this flood watch extends for coastal catchments from Serena down towards Tweed Heads. The Bureau talks about isolated minor to moderate flooding which is possible across parts of the flood watch area from late tomorrow. A rain band extends over eastern and central Queensland with an upper trough extending over Queensland enhancing shower and thunderstorm activity. The upper trough will continue to move south and east uh, towards the east coast from today before moving offshore late on Wednesday into Thursday and we should see a clearance of the rain by Thursday. As I said, remember it is working in combination with a surface trough which is forecast to develop near the central Queensland coast from today and the Bureau is still sticking with that areas between Carmilla and Harvey Bay likely to see... Um, the development of that surface trough and this will obviously enhance rainfall, winds and seas in its vicinity. The coastal trough will weaken also as we move into Thursday. Catchments within the flood watch area are moderate, moderately dry at the moment but are beginning to obviously become soaked as rainfall in the coastal areas over the last few days. Moderate to locally heavy rainfall is possible over the flood watch area from the remainder of today right through until Wednesday before easing on Thursday. The Bureau still reports significant uncertainty, still remains in the timing and location of the rainfall, although the coastal areas through central southeastern Queensland and adjacent ranges are most likely to see the heaviest of the rainfall. Localised river level rises and flash flooding are likely, obviously, with any heavy downpours, with or especially if areas of rain become stationary and slow moving, and the heaviest rainfall could result in isolated minor to moderate riverine flooding. Due to the localised nature of the heavier falls at this stage, the Bureau says it's not possible to be more specific about the areas which may be subject to the highest flood risk. Flooding, flash flooding or isolated flooding will obviously result in disruption to transport routes, uh, major road networks and isolation of some communities. So if you are travelling to or from work or social commitments over the next 24 to 48 hours, you definitely need to be weather aware and weather prepared in case some wet weather comes your way and there is minor flooding. Now catchments likely to be affected include the Connors, Isaac, Stikes Rivers and Plain Creek, Mackenzie, Fitzroy Rivers, the Shoalwater and Water Park Creeks, Calliope River, the Boyne River, the Baffle Creek, Colon River, Burnett River, Burrum and Sherwell Rivers, both the Mary and the Noosa Rivers, the Sunshine Coast Rivers and Creeks, both the Pine and Caboolture Rivers, both the Upper and Lower Brisbane River, and this includes the Bremer River out towards Ipswich and the Lockie, Laidley and Worrell Creeks, both the Logan and Albert Rivers, and lastly Gold Coast Rivers and Creeks. So quite an extensive flood watch in effect from the Bureau, and they will update this flood watch by no later than 2 o'clock tomorrow, Tuesday the 13th of August. Now we also have a coastal hazard warning for damaging surf. This is for people in parts of the Wide Bay, Burnett, South East Coast forecast districts. In particular, damaging surf conditions may be present from Kari, uh, the Kari Ghost, uh, or sorry, Fraser Coast down towards the Sunshine Coast. You can see this area highlighted in yellow. So basically on Fraser Island down through Fraser Island all the way into Gympie, the Sunshine Coast down to uh, Maroochydore, that yellow shaded area is uh, warned for damaging surf over the next uh, 24, 48 hours. The Bureau says that a trough near the central Queensland coast is combining with high pressure system in the Tasman Sea to generate strong easterly winds and large waves along the southern Queensland coast. Damaging surf conditions, which may lead to beach erosion, are forecast to develop about the warning area from early on Tuesday morning and continue through Wednesday. A hazardous surf warning has also been issued for the Capricorna, Fraser and Sunshine Coast waters for Tuesday and Wednesday. Locations which may be affected include east facing beaches along Fraser, Rainbow Beach, uh, Rainbow Beach, sorry, Noosa Heads and Marucci Door. So probably not the best idea to go out boating or have any beach related activities on Fraser Coast and the Sunshine Coast over the next 24 to 48 hours due to that damaging surf conditions. 
And as I said, we also do have a hazardous surf warning. Again, surf and swell conditions are expected to be hazardous for coastal activities, such as rock fishing, boating and swimming in the following areas for tomorrow, the Capricornia Coast, the Fraser Coast and the Sunshine Coast waters. And then on Wednesday the 14th, it's the same areas, the Capricornia Coast, the Fraser Coast, the Sunshine Coast, but then the warning extends down to the Gold Coast on Wednesday. So again, not ideal beach or surf conditions over the next 24, 48 hours. Alrighty, let's take a look a little bit of a deeper dive into the radar. So as we can see, these black streamlines on your screen indicate a strong easterly flow coming in onto the coast. So this strong easterly, this strong moist onshore flow delivering moisture into this trough system, which is obviously feeding the current uh, rain activity that we're seeing. So firstly, you can see air widespread areas now of light to moderate rainfall establishing across southeast Queensland, and this will continue over the next 20, 24 to 48 hours as this trough system approaches southeast Queensland and then moves offshore by Thursday. So again, a moist onshore easterly flow coming into the southeast and central Queensland coast at the moment. Again, we're seeing areas of light to moderate rainfall currently between the Brisbane CBD up to Deception Bay, some light rainfall over Morton Island. Areas of uh, light to moderate rainfall across the scenic rim all the way from Laidley down to Harrisville, Boona down towards the Queensland New South Wales border. As we go further north, we still have areas of light to moderate rainfall around Maryborough, Tiaro towards Poona and obviously light rainfall now established across Harvey Bay out towards Fraser Island as well. And this rain activity is pushing further inland where we see some light to moderate rainfall currently around Taroom out towards Injun, and then on the northern parts of the Darling Downs, light to moderate rainfall established right from Rangemoor through Jendawi, Chinchilla out towards Condamine and Jackson as well. And light rainfall kind of a little bit isolated at the moment through Milmerran, uh, Inglewood, Killarney towards Warwick and Stanthorpe as well. So a little bit going on. Current temperatures, we'll start with the southeast coast district. We've got, uh, we'll start down the Gold Coast this evening where it's about 20 degrees at Surface Paradise, 17 degrees out at Bow Desert, 15 at Oxenford. We have 18 at Ipswich, 17 at Laidley. It's 19 degrees at Victoria Point on Brisbane's Bay side, 19 degrees in the Brisbane CBD, Brisbane metro area. Deception Bay Redcliffe sitting on 18 degrees, 19 degrees on Morton Island, 20 degrees at Caboolture, 18 degrees at Woodford, heading further north into the sunny coast, 20 degrees at Maroochydore, 21 at Coolum Beach, 21 at Tawana. Wanton, up towards the Wide Bay Burnett District, Gympie sitting on 19, Kingaroy on 16, Crow's Nest on 14, Tincan Bay 18 to 20 degrees, Maribara 18, Harvey Bay 19, also 19 at Bundaberg and 18 at Gainda. Into the Darling Downs Granite Belt, 17 degrees respectively at both Moles and Chinchilla and Dolby, 16 at Oakey, between 14 to 16 degrees to Woomba, it's 14 at Warwick, 13 at Stanthorpe on the Granite Belt and Inglewood 18, lastly Gundawindi 16. But again, plenty of rain to come over the next 24 to 48 hours. So let's take a look at the official forecast information from the Bureau of Meteorology. This is their official Queensland forecast they issued at 4.30 this afternoon. Bureau talking about in their weather situation, a high pressure system will linger in the Tasman scene for the next few days, maintaining a ridge over Queensland, and it's delivering moisture well and truly inland in that easterly onshore float I just showed you. The high will move east from Thursday, but we see that upper trough extending over Queensland, which is enhancing shower and thunderstorm activity. The upper level trough, as I said, continues to amplify and strengthen as it moves towards the east coast down towards central southeastern Queensland, and it is working in combination with that surface trough which is forecast to develop near the central Queensland coast by tomorrow most likely between Carmilla and Harvey Bay. This will obviously see an enhancement in rainfall winds and sea in its vicinity in the coastal trough uh, will likely weaken from Thursday, as will, will the upper trough and that trough system pushing offshore by Thursday. Now, the Bureau hasn't spoken about in their forecast here about the development of that potential low pressure system, and that's something that we will need to watch, particularly up around that central Queensland coast. If the low develops on or near the coast, we could see a significant increase in rainfall to areas on the southern side. But if the low develops offshore and stays offshore, then obviously all the heavy rain will stay offshore at the moment. And there's still uncertainty on where exactly that low will pop up. So that's something that we need to watch as well. As we get into tomorrow, the 13th of August, the Bureau talking about uh, obviously showers, isolated scattered showers with isolated thunderstorm potential in central and eastern districts between Mackay, Roma and Brisbane. Possible heavy rainfall between St. Lawrence down through to Room and to the northern parts of the Sunshine Coast. And then we obviously see scattered to widespread showers, areas of rain and possible moderate rainfall in central and eastern districts south of St. Lawrence. 
and then obviously hazardous surf conditions from the Fraser and Sunshine Coast. Similar story for Wednesday the 14th of October, chance of thunderstorm activity in the eastern district south of Gladstone with possible heavy rainfall over the Fraser Coast. Scattered to widespread showers, areas of rain and possible moderate rainfall in eastern districts south of Gladstone as well, which will ease later on Wednesday before seeing a clearance on Thursday. Again, hazardous surf conditions remain in effect for the Fraser, Sunshine and Gold Coast as we get into Wednesday. And then by Thursday, we see the rain clear off and that is it. It is all said and done. Taking a look at your district forecast, district by district, we'll start with the Wide Bay Burnett District. Firstly, for tomorrow, cloudy, very high chance of rain, chance of a storm possibly severe with heavy rainfall possible. And it's a similar story for Wednesday. Cloudy, very high chance of rain, most likely in the morning. Chance of a thunderstorm and large and powerful surf conditions are expected to be hazardous for coastal activities, such as rock fishing, swimming and surfing, again, right through tomorrow, Tuesday, and into Wednesday. Southeast Coast District, it's a similar story for tomorrow. Cloudy, very high chance of rain, chance of a thunderstorm in the northern parts with heavy rainfall possible. Again, large, powerful surf conditions expected to be hazardous for coastal activities, such as rock fishing, swimming and surfing, in particular up on the Sunshine Coast. And it's the same story for Wednesday, the 14th of August. Very high chance of rain, most likely in the morning and afternoon, with a chance of a thunderstorm near the coast. Again, large, powerful surf conditions expected to be hazardous for coastal activities such as rock fishing, swimming and surfing, and that will be in effect for the Sunshine Coast and Gold Coast areas. Lastly, the Darling Downs Granite Belt for tomorrow. Very high chance of rain, most likely in the morning. And then Thursday, partly cloudy, chance of some morning fog with a medium chance of showers. So unfortunately, the further inland you go towards the Darling Downs, yes, they will see rain, but the heavier and the bigger of the rainfall totals is more confined to the coastal areas. But still some rain to fall across the Darling Downs Granite Belt, just not as much as what's expected towards the coastal areas and those areas slightly inland. So lastly, the official thunderstorm forecast from the Bureau of Meteorology was issued today. This is their uh, official thunderstorm forecast. And as we can see, the area that we're watching is this area of yellow, which extends from Rockhampton up in the Capricornia district all the way down to Gainda Harvey Bay. That yellow area is indicative of where severe thunderstorm uh, potential exists. And again, any severe thunderstorms that do pop up, heavy rainfall will be the primary risk with them. And that severe thunderstorm possibility extends from St. Lawrence down to th th uh, through to Room and to Harvey Bay, where heavy to or where moderate to heavy rainfall uh, could be associated with thunderstorm activity. And then we also see the potential for moderate rainfall, possible south of St. Lawrence, extending, excuse me, all the way into New South Wales. So the light green area is indicative of where non-severe thunderstorms are possible, but that yellow area is where severe thunderstorms are possible with that heavy rainfall. So a little bit to digest there, but yes, we do have wet weather on the way. And if we just bring it back to our current radar, we can see there's plenty of rain currently across southeast Queensland, and that's only expected to continue as we get into the next 24 to 48 hours. As you saw on the rainfall totals, this system is de definitely delivering the rainfall, and there is more on the way. So again, if you're out on the roads, you have social commitments, have some plans in place for wet weather to come your way. And as I always say, please be weather aware and weather prepared. But that's your current situation update as it stands. I'll try and get another video out to you tomorrow. Uh, but in the meantime, enjoy the rest of your evening. Please take care on the roads if you're driving. And as always, remain weather aware, weather prepared. And I'll see you on the next video update. Have a great evening.